Because it doesn't look like it recorded anything. <laughs> I thought I hit record on this. Yeah, you it. did, and I looked at it. Maybe and because I, and I it sure. wasn't getting anything for a while, maybe it just turned off. Because of the, because uh, yeah, because we took a while starting up. Yeah. Well, this is frustrating. I finally got Oscar back after two months at the avionics shop, just two days before I was planning to leave for Oshkosh. And on the very first test flight, my audio recorder didn't work. So although I got great video of that test flight, I have no cockpit audio describing the tests we did or the results we got. That said, here's my new panel. This is how it looked on the day of the first test. The glove box is back ordered, so there's just a blanking plate on the right side, but everything else is what it's going to be. Let's skip ahead to a flight a couple of weeks later, and I'll splice in some clips from the first and second test flights to cover a couple of things I discovered as I got familiar with the new gear. I hope you enjoy it. So the GI-275 primary ADI is right here. And uh, I'm not gonna go through it in detail because there's a million and one videos out there talking about the GI-275s. Um, what I will say is a couple things that I found a little bit surprising about it. Uh, the vertical speed indicator is in thousands of feet per minute with only one decimal point, which means the most precise you can be is in hundreds of feet per minute, which for a small single engine piston plane, I don't find is precise enough. I think especially when I'm coming in on approaches, I would have uh, I would have appreciated them letting it go down to the tens of feet per minute. Because uh, when you're coming in at 90 knots, there's a difference between you know, 410 feet per minute and 440 feet per minute. Uh, but they're both going to show up as 400 feet per minute. Other than that, I'd say it's been absolutely terrific. Um, the autopilot interface doesn't do everything I would have wanted, everything I thought it would do. And there's one thing that I thought it would do that it doesn't do anymore, even though it used to. It doesn't catch capture the glide slope properly, so it'll capture it. If I'm doing an approach, doing a GPS approach, It'll capture the glide slope, but then instead of following it down, it actually pitches the plane up, which is kind of the opposite of what I want to see happen. I'm turning around. I don't like this. Um, it's the opposite of what I want to see happen, right? Because when you're coming in for a landing on an approach, you want to go down for a landing, not go up, especially at that speed. Um, so, cannot currently use this to fly a fully coupled GPS approach with glide slope. Now, for me personally, that's not a big deal because I never used that anyway. I used to fly the glide slope manually, um, but it would be nice if I could get that fixed over time. Right now, I've got full altitude hold mode, roll and heading mode, pitch mode, well, altitude hold mode and heading mode. And I've got this switch here on heading, and I'm basically just heading north, which is fine. Um, altitude hold mode works great. Um, when I first did the test flight with Denise, it kind of looked like you would set the altitude and then it would uh, go up a couple hundred feet, two to three hundred feet, which is not ideal. Um, Let's go altitude, go for it. Oh, okay. Okay, let it, let it do its thing. Let it do its thing and we'll see where it uh, levels up. Okay. From you see, so it climbed. Yeah, about a hundred now, 120. About 120, which you, you mentioned it did that before. It was about 100 before, yeah. Well, we tried the centering. No, it's level off now, yeah. But 2310. Now it's climbing in a little bit. Oh, it's climbing quite a bit. Okay, 2350, 2360, okay. Oh, it's climbing in again. It would then lock in at that higher altitude, but I found after a few flights it seemed to figure that out, and now whatever altitude I push the altitude hold button at, it seems to lock in pretty good. Within about 30 or 40 feet, it'll it'll hold it. Now right now it's maybe 50 feet off, but I was just turning around, so well, now it's 70 feet off. Um, but I that'll come down. It's already starting to come down, All right? I set it at about 30-30, now it's, it was almost 3100, now it's about 30,080. So it's coming back down, which is really nice. And the look of the panel is awesome. Love it. The only thing, obviously the old century, the autopilot looks a little out of place, it's a little old, makes it look a little bit messy, but it is about a hundred times better 
than it was um, prior to the upgrade, and I, I just love the look of it. I mean, especially, it's just so clean. Um, you know, having the extra space here, I initially thought, oh, it's gonna look odd just having a couple of GI-275s instead of the full six-pack. Uh, but what I find is that between those two, between the autopilot, between the JPI, and then between putting my iPad up here on the left, it actually doesn't look empty at all. It doesn't look odd at all. I might at some point formally mount the iPad a bit closer to the instrument panel, but right now I actually like having it a little bit out. I've just got it on a RAM mount, and it's close enough that I can kind of sketch and write down ATIS and everything on it. ETN's fantastic. Absolutely love it. It is so much easier to use than the uh, GNS. The GTN and the GNS talk to each other nicely. Well, the GTN populates the GNS with a flight plan. So it is just so smooth now. I can come in here, put in a flight plan. Um, you know, let's just keep the one that I had coming back from Oshkosh. I'll just reverse it. And I can say send that over to the GNS, or to the GTN, I mean. Come over here. There it is. It's sitting there waiting for me. Hey, preview. Activate. So there it is, it's active. Now, the GI-275 here nicely kind of shows the key sort of data points on that flight plan. It tells me it's a GPS. It's connected to the GPS for heading, to get the heading in the, uh, in the route. Uh, I'm in terminal mode. The next uh, waypoint is Otvug, and my ETE here is 31-ish minutes, but of course I'm going in the wrong direction. Um, and then that will send it over to the GNS. All right, so I've got the same flight plan in both, which is really sweet. All right, I can put this into GPS S mode. I really only used, I didn't use that GPS steering. With the, uh, the GNS and the Century 3, GPS steering didn't work. I didn't have the right coupler for it. But with the GTN in there, it's got the coupler for it. GPS steering, steering works beautifully. Uh, so I don't even have to uh, necessarily turn the headings myself. It will follow my flight plan beautifully, so I'm going to call in now, let them know I'm coming in. And that was my altitude alerter, telling me that I'm dropping below 3,000, which is what I had that set to, so I'm changing that to 2,000. I still keep forgetting to change that altitude alerter, it's, it's, I'm not used to having it, but it is nice. It gives you a very audible beep when you're more than 200 feet. Well, when you're approaching it, when you hit 200 feet before, it'll beep. And then if you're just kind of flying long and you drop below or above 200 feet away from it, it'll beep as well. What else can I tell you? So I can put a visual approach into the GTN. GNS does not support a visual approach, so I always get that little message saying, flight plan not supported, all right? There's a little beep saying I'm approaching my target altitude, so I'll slow down the descent, add a little bit of power. I'm still learning the ins and outs of the new gear, particularly the details of the GTN 650XI, which is incredibly powerful. I'm sure it'll take quite a while to get everything down and become really proficient with it, but so far I'm loving my new panel. It does take some adjusting though, and I had an odd moment on my very first takeoff where I blanked for a second. Take a look. The uh, very first time I sat down and went for a takeoff, despite the fact I had watched hours and hours of YouTube videos, read the manuals multiple times, and used the Garmin Trainer app for the GTN. When I sat down to actually take off, I was like, I don't know where to look. I, I'm so used to that six pack after four years of training and practice that despite all that training and practice, my my eyes just kept looking for airspeed indicator and a VSI and, and a separate altimeter. So it's uh, it's really quite something how ingrained the, the patterns and the uh, the scan becomes. Uh, now that said, it didn't take long for me to get used to it. Within I'd say 15 minutes, it felt natural. I absolutely love this. I'll probably do the odd video on flying different phases of flight, particularly getting back into flying IFR approaches. But for now, I'll be switching over to my first trip to Oshkosh for the next few videos. I hope you join me for those. As always, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, fly safe.